This past weekend, the Wall Street Journal's exchange section headline rang out, winning in the COVID economy, robot coworkers and hands-free pizza delivery. The feature went on to extol companies best position for the COVID era that had technology that allowed them to adapt quickly to changing times. Touchless transactions, robotics, online commerce, or the infrastructure needed to support a decentralized workforce. Nestled between homages to Domino's hands-free pizza delivery and Stanley Black & Decker's robot co-workers was a section about a company whose business model is made for this technology, according to Kaiser Permanente's EVP of Health Plan Operations, Dr. Artie Southam. Hi, I'm Amy Grant of the ABL organization. Just last December at ABL's 22nd Annual Innovations in Healthcare event, Artie was presented with our Leadership and in Innovation Award. Since long before COVID, Kaiser Permanente has implemented their robust electronic medical record system that put Epic on the map. Their EMR and telehealth program already enabled the majority of Kaiser's physician-patient interactions. However, according to the journal, last year video consults represented less than 1% of scheduled visits and telephone, only 16%, although many more e-visits were held via email. But once COVID hit, by April, 74% of its visits were by phone and 7% by video. Three months later, once restrictions started to be lifted, televisits by phone receded to 42%, but video visits continued to climb to 14%. The great news is that patients across the country are now able to take advantage of telehealth. Just this past week, Kim Darling, CEO of Competitive Health, was the featured member presenter at our ABL Health Orange County Zoom table. Kim has developed a healthcare marketplace of tele-everything offerings for payers, TPAs, employer groups, brokers, and associations with a range of telehealth products. Their telebehavioral health program is particularly popular since, as the Washington Post announced as early as May, a third of Americans now show signs of clinical anxiety or depression, Census Bureau finds amid coronavirus pandemic. The Census Bureau? Yes. It turns out the National Center for Health Statistics partnered with the Census Bureau to create the Household Pulse Survey to assess the impact of COVID on the nation's mental health, with virtually all cohorts more anxious and depressed in July than they were in April. Of course, even CEOs can feel the anxiety that comes with wondering if they're making the right decisions. That's why, since 1983, ABL has been convening CEOs at first technology companies and by the late 80s healthcare organizations. Fortunately, one of SoCal 10 MedTech members who helped us make the leap into healthcare was Bob Panari. At the time, Bob was the president of Pharmaceal, one of Baxter's largest divisions. Since then, he's also been the CEO of Syncor International, Crescent Healthcare, the chairman of Next Stage, and currently he's executive chairman of Patient Care America. We've also been fortunate to have Bob as the chairman of ABL's Healthcare Executive Council, serving as our guiding light for many years as our members grapple with the challenges that we face in healthcare, even during the best of times, and use the roundtables as an opportunity to bring your problems to a knowledgeable group of people and get good advice and counsel, particularly during this time of high stress. One of our members who vicariously feels the stress of our millennials working in Silicon Valley's tech epicenter is Cecile Courier, CEO of Concern, the Valley's largest employee assistance program, which of course is now providing online counseling services to wherever tech employees may be moving. Fortunately for ABL Silicon Valley Healthcare Roundtable, Cecile hosts our sessions in El Camino Hospital, the hospital of Silicon Valley, where she's also a VP. El Camino has to be among the most tech-enabled hospitals in the country, with robotic tugs delivering linens and pharmaceuticals, the most advanced surgical and radiology equipment, and multi-facing cameras, microphones, and screens in each of their impressive meeting rooms. Thankfully for us, a few times before the state was shut down, and all of our roundtables became Zoom tables, we were able to practice holding hybrid in-person slash Zoom tables at El Camino. As you might expect, the MedTechie members in the group gave me hands-on coaching, including the roundtable the week before the first of what have now been 47 Zoom tables since then. To echo the words of Grace Lee, CEO of Unlock Lifeways, ABL provides an excellent opportunity to share knowledge and expertise on the most current issues in the healthcare industry including how to facilitate a Zoom table with typically 16 to 18 members sharing their best practices, advising each other on their toughest business issues, and providing what Debbie Toth, the CEO of Choice and Aging, calls her think tank family. And frankly, the silver lining of COVID has been no traffic 
so members can zoom into their roundtables from their home offices, backyards, extended vacation hideouts, and their plants in Taiwan and China. Best of all, for three hours, they're with fellow members they trust, who is Oli Thordarson, CEO of Alvaca Networks, has become more than business associates that meet once a month. You become friends, and we'd love to have you with us.